welcome, I'm Lloyd, and this is the Dressing Gown Diary review of round three and the preview of round four. You'll all note this is a late dropping Dressing Gown Diary. There's been stuff going on, but let's fire straight into it. Round three, it opened up with Ireland demolition of Wales. Wales bizarrely actually played quite well, kept in it, penalty try, could have potentially had another one, but Ireland were just professional and ended up dominating by 24 points. Those of you that listened, Freddie's flutter came in. The, uh, the, the handicap on that position was 22 and a half, so you were just inside. Happy days, even money bet. Move on, move on. Scotland, <coughs> they uh, produced their annual win against England. There's not really much else to say. Dwayne van der Merwe, again, with a brilliant uh, hat-trick. Southers enjoying the hospitality uh, in uh, Murrayfield. The England fans upset. However, were there signs of encouragement the way England played? They played a different game plan. They tried to throw the ball around. First try was a great try. But it's, is this a sign of uh, England trying to be a bit more expansive? Yes, there were uh, mistakes, but is that as a consequence of just not being used to the system? Time will tell, time will tell. The uh, final game of the weekend, Italy will be holding their heads. They had an opportunity to beat France and obviously missed the kick in the dying embers of the game. France in discipline caused the, uh, caused the complications. They had, in the first half, they were all over Italy, camped in the 22, and obviously the red card then turned out to be expensive. But uh, question mark over whether that the, the shot clock is there for a situation where the ball falls off the tee. Is it not just to encourage players to get on with it? Poor old Kabisi, when the ball fell off the tee, then he has to rush, snap, and then it unfortunately hits the post. It was unlucky, but it's great to see Italy get close. This weekend kicks off Italy hosts Scotland. This is a game that Italy traditionally target as a win uh, or at least a, an opportunity for a win. Dwayne van der Merwe, though, will be targeting tries again. He's two tries away from being Scotland's record point scorer, record try scorer, sorry. So he'll be pushing hard. Uh, Scotland have won uh, 13 against Italy on the bounce in all competitions. So they'll be looking to put uh, Italy to the score, Italy to the, uh, Italy to the sword. Italy have, have beaten Scotland seven times when they've only ever beaten all the other combined Six Nations teams six times. So it is a t an opportunity for Italy, but they've lost all... They've lost at home every single Six Nations game since 2013. That's a long time to be rocking up in the Stadio Olimpico to watch your team lose. It's 26 games in all counts. It's tough. Scotland have won 7 out of 10 of their away games, which is as good a performance as they put in. It took 51 games previously to win 7 matches. So Scotland are progressing. They're in good form. And if they win today, they've still got the opportunity to secure the Triple Crown and the final game against Ireland on the on Super Saturday. The second game of the weekend sees uh, England host Ireland. Well, where where do England go? They've they've made some changes. Mitchell's back, so they'll be hoping for a bit more speed off the off the ground. Fenway Wasobi, I'm not even sure how you pronounce his name, is in. He'll be looking for uh, ball in hand and some electric running. Uh, Ireland have made a change with uh, Hugo Keenan coming in. Does that make them stronger at the back? Ireland are looking to win five in a row against England in the five or six nations, which they haven't achieved since 72, between 72 and 76. So there's a lot on the line, but also we know full well that if Ireland get a bonus point win, they win the Six Nations in round four. No team has ever done that. So the emphasis clearly for Ireland will be, let's push, let's win points, let's go for it. England are looking to, uh, to avoid only two wins for the fourth consecutive season. Can they find a win today or will it, will it be in the last game away in France? They'll fancy their chances today, but they've been behind the last five matches they've played in the Six Nations so there's a lot to be done. Ireland, Ireland haven't. Uh, Ireland have been, just feel that they've got enough, though. I'm sure the way their discipline is, their angles of attack, their running, they'll be pushing forward and there'll be points galore in this game. The weekend closes off with Wales hosting France. No one thought that France would be uh, the basket case that they are at the moment. They were struggling against uh, Italy and scraped a draw in the end. England, uh, sorry, uh, Wales have made changes with George North and. Uh, uh, George North out along with Tompkins in the centre so a completely new centre partnership and France have made eight changes so they are looking to shake things up it could go either way it's difficult the, the, uh, the, the age, old, age old adage of we just don't know which French team are going to show up could be important so we'll close off Freddie's flutter this weekend I'm going to back Ireland again there are 12, 12 and a half points on the handicap so crack on with that back Ireland again for the back to back wings